Hi guys, I'm Franny and welcome back to my channel for another Vlogmas video. Today is the day of my first ever Q&A. That was... Anyways, thank you so much for all the questions that you asked me both in the comments, on Twitter, on Instagram. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciated it. And by the way, all my social media links are in the description down below. So if you want to follow me anywhere, just go there and you will find all the info that you need. But without further ado, let's answer these questions. I, I don't know how this works, but I won't be saying who asked me what for privacy reasons, I guess. English or Italian? Jeez. Okay, if I have to speak with people, you know, in my daily life, I prefer Italian. I love how it sounds, but for TV shows, movies, songs, I think I'm gonna go with English. What is your favorite type of book to read? I don't know, is this about the genre? I don't really have a favorite genre. I will say that perhaps fantasy books are the ones that I enjoy most. Like, they're, I don't want to say that they're guilty pleasure because they're not, but I have more fun reading them. And literary fiction is the kind of genre that I love to read when I really want to think about things. And I think that it's also my go-to when I want to read books that are more um, original and peculiar and something that will surprise me in a way. Ebooks or physical books? Physical books? The first book that you remember reading besides the children books. I got it, I got it. The first book that I remember reading, my first more grown-up book, I think, is The Tin Princess by Philip Pullman. And I... this is the fourth book in a... how do you call a series with four books? Wait, I don't know things. I feel like Jon Snow right now. I can't do this. The fourth book in the Sally Lockhart Quartet. But it was gifted to me when I was 9 or 10 years old, I think. And I had no idea that it was part of a series. I thought it was just, you know, a standalone. I didn't even think about a series back then. And I was just struck at how much a grown-up book it seemed to me and I still think that it was because there was a lot about history and politics and a lot of metaphors. I still remember most of it and I don't know what it would be like to read it now but I think that that should happen because I still think to this day that it's one of my favorite books ever but it's been so long since the last time that I've read it. How long have you been speaking English for and what other languages do you speak? I think in primary school maybe uh, I started having, you know, English classes. And how many languages do you speak? English and Italian. That's all. Italian is my first language. English I learned I think on my own because even though I studied it in school it was never, you know, at a high level, it was just basic stuff. I never really studied it, I just watched TV shows and movies and then I started reading books and that's how I learned, I guess. If you could visit another country now, what would it be? Um, England, I think. I would love to go to England during the Christmas time, I think it would be quite beautiful. Favorite Disney movie? I think I'm gonna go with Aladdin and then Tangled? I really loved Tangled. Bookmark or dog-eared page? Bookmark, okay? Nobody is going to dog-ear pages of my books. Not a chance. Favorite actor? I should have prepared the answers before. Favorite actor? The editing of this video is going to be the worst thing ever. Favorite actor or favorite actress? I'm gonna go with favorite actor because that is what was written in the question. Eddie Murphy, that's his name, okay. Uh, I watched Mr. Church a few weeks ago, so it, it's still stuck in my mind. I'm gonna go with Eddie Murphy because he is great both in comedies, he just cracks me up so hard and he's also great in more dramatic movies, so Eddie Murphy. But also Will Smith. I mean, do we want to talk about Will Smith? And there's also Brandon Michael Hall, because you guys know that I'm obsessed with him right now. 
in case you hadn't gathered. And also Idris Elba, I'm watching Luther and he's just blowing my mind away. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. The book that is dearest to you. Gosh, that's another tough one. All the books of my childhood that I have stuck away safely in boxes. They are in boxes because I don't have the space for them in my room anymore. But if only one of them went missing, I would just lose my mind. I would be in the deepest despair because I want to keep all of them. The ideal trip. I like road trips, definitely. And I love to go on road trips with my dad because we always have so much fun. I love those kinds of trips where you walk a lot, like where you don't use transportation, where you don't necessarily go into museums and churches, but you just wander the streets without a specific plan, without a specific um, route that you have to follow and just see where, you know, the fate takes you. Pokemon or Digimon and which is your favorite? Pokemon or Digimon and which one is your favorite? I'm gonna go with Pokemon and favorite Pokemon is Lapras. What is the book that has been on your nightstand for all 2018 and you never got to it? I said I was going to read The Secret History by Donna Tart this year. I have the book didn't get to it yet. What do you miss the most about home? Uh, okay, besides my family, obviously, and my dog, Charlie, and besides food, because the food that you have at home, you won't find it anywhere else. Like, even in Italy, you have different cities with different kinds of foods. Here, the food is just terrible. I want to go home and eat my food. But the thing that I miss the most about home is actually watching the sunrise and before I go running or when I come back from running depending on you know whether it's summer or winter I always watch the sunrise it gives me a sense of peace and belonging and it also makes me feel more in tune with nature and with the universe I don't know it's hard to explain but it's it's a great feeling and I miss it a lot and the last one, what Italian books do you think should be translated and why? Okay, I decided to go with three books that have been written by Italian authors and haven't been translated and I have chosen one middle grade, one YA and one literary fiction. And the reason why they should be translated is just because I think that they are very good books, they are great stories and they are very well written and I think that people outside of Italy would really enjoy them but they haven't been translated yet and that sucks. Um, the middle grade book is actually the first book in a series and I read them when I was in primary school from when I was five years old to when I was eight, nine years old. The first book is called La Bambina della Sesta Luna and the translation would be The Girl of the Sixth Moon. The book is set in Venice and it is about a young girl whose parents are working abroad in Russia, I think, and she's living with her grandpa who is teaching her alchemy. Unfortunately, one day her grandpa dies but leaves her a letter and in this letter he tells her that she has to go on a mission to defend a certain planet with some friends that she has and it's just a lot of adventures a lot of very complex and dangerous adventures considering that she's 10 years old in the first book and I think that people would love it like children all over the world would love this series but it has been translated and that does not sit well with me the YA book is also part of a trilogy and I never finished that trilogy I should do so when I go back home for the Christmas holidays I'll see to that but still the first book is called Perfetto which translates to perfect and it is a dystopian series where you only have women. All men have died because of a disease and our main character Lilac, she lives in the south of France but then something happens, I don't remember exactly what it was but she has to escape because she's in danger, perhaps she did something that she wasn't supposed to, I don't remember but she escapes with her best friend and they cross the border, they go from France to Italy in the south of Italy and there they come to a village 
where they find out that perhaps not all men have died, as they were told. And stuff goes from there, and once again, it's a great series, very articulate and complicated, and there are LGBT themes, and I have to read the third book. Why haven't I read the third book yet? And the literary fiction book is Forte come l'onda e il mio amore, which translates to Strong as the wave is my love. I don't remember the synopsis quite well, I don't remember exactly what happens because this is a 600 pages long book. It is huge and there's a lot happening, I do remember that, but it starts out with a character that wakes up on a deserted island and he doesn't remember how he got there, he has no idea where he is, he's alone and he has a huge scar on his back. And he only remembers, like he has this memory of a woman's face that is illuminated by the sun and he knows that this woman is extremely important, that she's in danger and that he has to find her. Again, I don't remember exactly what went down but I do remember that he traveled all over the world and that he meets a lot of people and he's desperate because he needs to find this woman but he cannot find any clues as to who she is and where she is and I remember crying, feeling so many feels and emotions and finding so many quotes and just being so in the story that I just, I loved that book so so much and perhaps it's because it is such a long book but it is not all that well known both in Italy and I think it was translated in German and there was another language, but not English, which is weird. I mean, German and not English, that's weird. But yeah, it was amazing and I wish more people would read it. And this is it for this video. These were all the questions that you guys asked me. Thank you again so, so much for doing so. If you have any other questions, write them down in the comments because I might do in the future another Q&A or I might just answer to them in the comments, we'll see. But yeah, thank you so much again for the questions, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow with another Vlogmas video. Warm hugs!